Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In the previous episode, we did this, obviously, and, and we can push this asteroid around. Clearly, we would be able to bring it into the Kerbin system, though the jury's still out about whether we could bring it into Kerbin orbit. So we're in interplanetary space with this right now, and so... We've got about uh, four days before we have to decide whether we want to do this maneuver, which will bring it to a curve in periapsis of 6,911 kilometers. And at that point, the question is whether we could dip it into Kerbin's atmosphere so that Kerbin's atmosphere can uh, apply sufficient drag to bring it into orbit. But considering that we're trying to defend against asteroids, it would seem a little bit premature to to bring an asteroid into Kerbin's atmosphere. Yeah, uh, we need to do much more research about asteroids before taking such a step, I think. And we haven't actually done much science around an asteroid. We apparently need to put a Kerbin on to take a surface sample is the thing, and we don't have any Kerbals to do that with. Now I'm trying to look f to see if I had put any science instruments on this. Should have done, but can't really see. I don't know if there's any science to be done here. So, well, uh, hmm, yeah. Let's look at the tech tree and uh, the research log to see what we need to do in terms of science and also talk about what asteroids might be coming in that might pose a threat to Kerbin. Interesting that they don't really have a category for asteroids here so that's that's worrisome. Now the next asteroid that is of interest is coming in in five days. I've written all the asteroids down so that I don't have to constantly check the tracking station and the next asteroid that's gonna come in is called IHY 504 and it does not have a Kerbin periapsis, so it's potentially an impactor. And it is a Class D. Now, we've already experienced the fact that with a Class C, uh, it's a little bit difficult to push it around. And that was in interplanetary space. Once it gets into Kerbin's sphere of influence, it's going to take a lot more delta V to move it out of its current trajectory. So that's a concern. And of course, it being Class D, it'd take even more. So we want to get a lot of science before that particular asteroid gets in. The question is how to optimize the amount of science we get. Now it looks like what we really want to do is send a lot of probes with science juniors because we haven't done many science juniors. Uh, even on Kerbin we haven't done many science juniors. So now that we are doing probe missions, I think uh, sending the science juniors out would be a good idea and bring them back, of course. Uh, but on mass, lots of them. So yeah, I think that's that's going to be the plan. Hmm, a seismometer if we have it. I don't know what other uh, barometer readings we don't seem to have. So we'll stock up, we'll do them on Kerbin, we'll do them on the moon, and we will do Science Juniors on Minmus as well. Let's, let's get a, a craft that can deliver a Science Junior all over the place, and, and let, then we'll be able to get them to where they need to go. Alright, so see you at the VAB. So let's build this from the ground up. Let's say we've got a probodyne. Well, let's let's use the flat core. Well, no, it's easier to attach things to the probodyne one. Uh, this one instead of this one. So let's use that. And, of course, we need a science junior, so let's just get that on there right away. We can stick instruments on this. And let's go to angle snap. And I wish I, we, we had some sort of third instrument to put here, but uh, we haven't unlocked anything yet, I guess. Mm, let's let's go no rabbit ear style. Yeah. Okay, and 
Let's also put parachutes, obviously. Uh, that doesn't look like it'll be good enough for all... Well, that should be good enough for all of this, right? Because this is just what, 0.1 tons. Uh, the Science Junior is just 0.2. Yeah, that should be fine. We could even slap Mystery Goo on the side and it should still be fine. Oh, that's, that's very bulky, though. Uh, shall we bring Mystery Goo? Maybe there's another way to put Mystery Goo on this this sort of thing. Um, I mean, we could, but that doesn't look right, and it won't fit with everything else. Um, let Let's build the rest of this thing. No, oh, that's very probish, isn't it? Okay, let me calculate the delta V of this. Okay, so I get that this thing has 1,660 units of delta V meters per second. I and we we really need a reaction wheel in here too. And so that changes everything. Reaction wheels are really heavy. 0. 0.3 tons. I mean, that just kills everything, doesn't it? Would there be a better way of doing it? Not really, because if we tried to use RCS instead of a reaction wheel, just the RCS ports is 0. 0.2 tons. So, you don't really get much benefit from that. Okay, so this now has 1,286. Is that enough? Not really, no. Not even remotely so. So we're going to have to go a little bit bigger if we want this reaction wheel. Well, maybe this will be just a ascent and return stage. This will be enough to ascend and return from the moon, for instance. And that's the tougher of the two moons, so... But if this is the ascent stage, then this these landing legs have to go somewhere else. Um, Wish we had radial tanks of a smooth sort to put on here. Hmm. Well, while I'm thinking about that, let me grab a battery, because we'll definitely need one of those. Mm, that might, be, might, might not be the best place to put a battery. Looks like the parachute will just yank everything off. So, uh, oh, these, those are bigger. But actually the batteries don't weigh much, so I can uh, keep it unbalanced and just put one in back, I think. And then some solar panels. I'm still contemplating whether to put the goo containers on the side here, so... I'll put one of these underneath here. And then just hold off on whether to put uh, more solar panels on the side instead of that one. Okay. So the problem is this stage can't bring this down and lift off from the moon. That is the concern I have. And it's not really... well there are some small tanks. Let's see. What if we add this to here? Like so. How much is that? Tiny amount of fuel. But, with that we can apply these tiny little liquid fuel engines and let's see how much that gives us. Alright, calculator time. It won't be much. Okay, well this gives us 540 delta V. That's not going to be enough. But it's close. It's tantalizingly close. Not exactly the look I was going for here. Oh, okay. That can be done. Well, 
in that case, I'll put another one. Okay, well that looks probish. Let me recalculate for this. Okay, now it gives me 1,284, which is acceptable for a moon return stage. So, that is fine. And we could probably use some of the juice in this bottom one to help us out with that. Oh, that looks a little bit unbalanced though right now. Let's see. Looks like the sort of thing that'll tip over, you see. I'm recalculating the whole thing. Barely enough for a landing, on the moon at least. Well, we can try this. Okay. So this will be our little moon lander. And we're going to call it about two tons, I think. And so this will conduct scientific experiments on different locations, on the moon Minmus, and, and even Kerbin. It will transmit such data. Now we have to build, I mean it should be, uh, do I have, I haven't even saved any of the, my sub-assemblies. So, yep. I think we'll just go to the next stage with this one. Find a lunar transit stage. That should be good enough. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this on uh, Kerbin. I'm gonna call it Science Junior Standard. And it'll be our standard way of delivering Science Juniors to the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. And heck, why don't I do something I don't do enough, which is uh, add little fins on it. Yes, why not. And that should be good enough. Let's get the launch clamps on. I might be forgetting something. Uh, well, since I didn't put the the goo containers on the side, let me move these rockets down and put the solar panels on the side. Like so. That'll be fine. Might be a bit top heavy. I'm going to action group the solar panels. And I'm going to also action group the antennae, both of them. That's, that's good enough. Alright, uh, well, let's take this out to the launch pad and uh, test it on Kerbin itself. Uh, pretty much anywhere on Kerbin we haven't done the science experiment, and it'll be a quickie. Okay, so I think the first thing we should do is go ballistic against a pole, right? Um, yeah, let's go for the pole. That'll be a good place to start off this sort of thing, unless we've done the Science Junior there. Out of all places, maybe that's the one place we've been to with it. Um, well, let's see. Okay, good. And we've gotten the barometer readings from uh, from inside the atmosphere, I believe. Where did I tuck those away in? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So off we go. And we gotta try and make orbit first, and then decelerate into landing on on the pole. So we're going to go into polar orbit and in the full polar orbit just to make sure that the stages can do that properly. I mean it shouldn't be a problem but you, you never know sometimes. Especially since I record these early in the morning and um, I'm not exactly in my most 
brilliant frame of mind at this time of day. I haven't got further word on it, but the last time I checked, uh, the the Easter eggs, like the monoliths and such, uh, don't give any extra science, and so that's why I haven't been to them. I really wish they did. Uh, I really should check that out again, though. I want these two stages to handle the entire orbit, and I'm not too sure that's going to work out. We'll see. Okay, let's point uh, north starting now. Don't have to go all the way yet. We'll have this burn just short of orbit, I think, and then we'll use this stage to complete the orbit. That way this one will fall back. Oh my god, what am I doing? I've been doing that a lot lately. Yeah, just uh, for some reason flattening out too quickly in uh, regular KSP. I don't know what causes that. It can't possibly be the mods I play with in the other series because those require even more gradual uh, ascent profiles, so you'd flatten out even later. I don't know, something about uh, default KSP lulls me into a false sense of security or something. Well, on the bright side, since this is a test, it'll give us plenty of margin. high here. Eh, we'll allow it. Okay. I think I'll be fine with that. We are coming down on the pole anyway. Alright. I think that leaves us with plenty of uh, oh, lights. I forgot this I forgot the lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yes, no lights. Um, Alright, well, while we're at it, uh, let's just make sure the solar panels work and the rabbit ears work. Okay, well, let's retract them back down because we're going to have uh, trouble coming back into the atmosphere with them out. Okay. So let's configure retrograde, and it looks like we have plenty of uh, fuel for uh, lunar transfer on this stage, so that's good. But we'll use it uh, to help our descent onto the surface of Kerbin and try a soft descent. The parachute should be able to handle that, but uh, let's see. Okay, well the ice cap is in sight. I think we can do a retro burn here. Let's try and get on the bright side of the ice cap because I once again forgot the lights, yes. Okay, looking good. I will of course just go ahead and expend this stage. But maybe not yet. Let's cross into the ice cap first. Okay, now we can. Alright. Looking good so far. hold off on that. 
Okay, let's start this burn. And let's get the landing gear down. We'll use the parachutes if necessary. Parachute. There's only one in this case. We'll have to transmit this data, of course. We're not going to be able to bring the science junior back. Interesting sounds on these rockets. I didn't really noticed before. It looks like we'll probably need to use the parachutes. Parachute. Close to a soft landing, but uh, not quite there. I think we'll run out of a juice before we hit the ground. Yep. Alright, well there we go anyway. Let's see if there's any new data to be gathered here. Alright, uh, flying over Kerbin's ice caps we can transmit. Uh, we should have extended the, both of them. Okay, that's done. Pressure data. Doesn't matter which biome we're over. Let me just extend... Oh, now this one is... Oh, that's not fair. Oh well. <laughs> that's either or, huh? Oh, fine. Okay, and... If I did a science junior flying, it probably won't let me do one on the ground, right? Yeah, let's uh, let's reset that. Okay, here we are, and observe the material bay here. It's worth even less than doing it over the air. All right, well let's transmit this. Not enough electric charge. Oh, I should have seen that coming. Why didn't I extend the solar? Well, we've got uh, we've got some solar panels that are always open, but they don't seem to be drawing much electric charge. Uh, direct sunlight, no sun exposure. Oh, they're on the opposite side of the sun. Huh. Okay. Well, all right. So we didn't get as much from this probe as we probably wanted to, but uh, let's send a few of these to the moon and Mimus, shall we? All right, so, uh, well, like, uh, see you on the launch pad. All right, in full disclosure, I wasn't actually able to go back to the space center on that previous mission. Uh, because it lost electric charge while the throttle was up, it kept saying that your throttle is up. But I had no way of turning the throttle down, so I had to, uh, when I clicked space center, revert 12 minutes. So I didn't, uh, technically, the game does not accept that I did that mission, so... Just just for your disclosure, but we didn't get that much science out of it anyway. Let's do the serious stuff, sending this science junior over to uh, the moon in Minmus. So let's focus on that, and this time not forget to uh, extend the solar panels. All right, uh, we're going to send a bunch of these. We're going to get them into orbit first, and then and transfer them. And so that's the plan. And I'm going to... See, uh, I'm going to do all the launches, and I'll show you all the launches, but uh, for the most part, I'll skip the interim parts and see you in orbit with uh, everything in orbit. Of course, I'll continue recording to just in case something happens. That's our uh, asteroid defense mission that is ready with uh, one of our Kerbals inside. That will most likely be used on the mission to intercept IHY-504, though the fact that IHY-504 is a Class D, uh, we're not entirely sure that our asteroid defense force up in orbit right now has enough juice to push it around. So that's going to be a consideration. Okay, so our first mission is up on a 100 by 99 orbit, so very nice, very nice. And we've used a tiny bit of this stage, not as much as we did on the awkward polar mission. 
So everything is looking good. Let's extend the solar panels and the antennae before I forget. Okay, this looks like it's all well suited to maintain communication and electric charge. So, so I think we should launch a few more, shall we? Alright, uh, back to the launch pad. Okay, next part of Moon Armada 2. If you noticed in the videos, I had uh, named the previous Moon Armada Moon Armada 1, uh, hinting that there would be a follow-up, and here we go. This is Moon Armada 2, and there will be a Minmus Armada as well. Though with only five days between now and when the IHY-504 asteroid is supposed to come in, it's going to come in on day 21 at around 15 hours according to our astronomers not that they're particularly right so uh, let's talk a little bit about asteroids here uh, that's the one that's coming in most immediately and it does not have a periapsis so it might strike Kerbin it might just give Kerbin a complete miss we don't know um, as far as the next one after that will be on day 24 so three days later and it does have a periapsis of 64,000 kilometers, but I'm not entirely sure we can trust our astronomers with these sorts of things. Um, estimates for Kerbin periapsis might change like as soon as it enters Kerbin's sphere of influence. We know how that works in KSP. So, those are the two most immediate on our radar, though... Uh, 12 days from now, there's also another C-Class coming in at 6,000 kilometers, uh, VYZ799. Uh, so, got all these to look forward to. And again, we're mainly tracking uh, C, D, and E-Class right now. Uh, obviously, if we wanted practice, it'd be much easier to handle A-Classes, but uh, the only A-Class we're tracking right now comes in on day 36, so in 20 days. So we've got one of those, and we've also got one B-class that we're keeping track of. That comes in much later. If it's not apparent from the series, by the way, I do love the skipper engine. I... I just... I'm just obsessed with using the skipper engine in most of my designs. Even in the huge rocket, I'll somehow slip one in. Or a few in. Uh, in my earlier series, when I had a much poorer microphone, I did create a super heavy launcher that was mostly stock except for procedural fairings at the top. And uh, that particular launcher had seven mainsails at the bottom, but uh, I managed to figure out how to slip uh, six, six of the skippers in the following stage. And that one lifted 144 tons into orbit. I should rebuild that. Uh, uh, instead of using the SLS parts, I might try and uh, reinstate the good old IBA launcher. The beauty of that particular launcher was with the procedural fairings, it uh, actually still looked somewhat like a rocket. Uh, it was very thin. Uh, it was uh, the seven mainsails and then seven uh, stacks of uh, red tanks and then uh, it was seven all the way up uh, to the procedural fairing and so it was uh, a very coherent design if you will. We shouldn't have too much fuel in this. Let's let's just expend it, even if it brings us to a slightly higher orbit. All right. So once again, we've expended the second stage short of orbit, but that's fine. We'll do the apoapsis burn with this third stage. Since these are remote control missions, I'm not too worried about uh, 
about things so we can relax. There are no Kerbals at risk in these missions. We are simply trying to get science. And we, we really should have overloaded these. We could have made much, much bigger probes, but let's try this out for now. I guess we can extend the solar panels and antenna iron now. Okay, we have 110 by 105. Alright. So this one's all situated. No problems. The moon's in sight. In fact, we could probably transfer to it right now. Let's let's get this one underway then. So this is uh, number two, and we let's get it underway to the moon. Okay, let's have it do that. So we'll get this underway to the moon. Okay, that that looks a little bit better. Moon of periapsis, 95k. Oh, I, you know what? Before I do another launch, I need to add lights to these things. Alright, so that's the plan. Uh, we've got two that don't have lights, but let's get some lights on the next view. Uh, also, let's rename these. Um, so, let me try, try and find my probe part, even though I didn't put any lights. No, not run tutorial tank. So let's rename vessel. So, uh, let's call this moon, since it's definitely head for the moon. Moon Science Junior 2. Okay. Or maybe I should name this one 1, since it's the first one that's actually heading there. Okay. Alright, uh, yeah, let's go back to the VAB and add some lights. I forgot about that. So if I recall, I think uh, I went with a sepia tone for the, for the moon, and we'll just go with that. And let's have uh, the standard... Oh, it looks like uh, we don't have a very good place to position lights in order to illuminate the instruments. Maybe we can at least do one uh, by moving this battery down and having one. Oh, that's a big light right there. Oh, sort of poking out. Oh, I hate that. See, this is why I don't put lights. <laughs> I just don't like the fact that they're poking out like this. But let's just go for it. That looks fine. Point five, point three, point two. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, and I guess we can. Uh, well, let's turn all the lights off so we can turn them on on the launch pad. Let's make this the standard now, so that we don't have to add lights in the future. And... And yeah, let's go with this. Okay, well now that we have lights, let's bring them on. Alright, throttle up and go. Let's try and make the best use of daylight as possible. How long do we have? Uh, just a little bit of time before we get into the night side of Kerbin. So, I want to make these get as many daylight launches in as we can. Of course time is wasting, you know. Asteroids are coming in. We assume, I mean the last one we thought was coming in decided to give us a miss entirely, but... Maybe asteroids are sentient and they actually avoid, uh, avoid objects. We don't know, we haven't done any science around one yet. Okay, so here we go again. Still in the atmosphere here, and our apoapsis this time is fairly low. But maybe it will also be a good time to transfer to the moon. So maybe we'll do a single burn like that. Let's let's plot for that. Let's say burn out of apoapsis straight to the moon. Okay, that's a good trajectory. Uh, I need to get my electric panels out because the charge is depleting. Okay, panels are out, though we seem to be in the dark right now. Uh, okay, we're recharging. Alright, anyway, uh, let's not muse over that. 
let us turn our sights to the next launch. And maybe we'll launch... Uh, well, no, actually, we need to rename this one first. And then maybe we'll aim the next launch at Minmus. So we call this uh, Moon Science Junior 2. Or maybe I should just uh, send the one that's already in orbit uh, to Minmus. The Moon Science Junior... Not the Science Junior Standard, this one. Is Minmus in a good place for it? Oh, what's that? Uh, that That's an asteroid. And it's large and it's close. It's not on our list. Um, yeah, let's go to this tracking station. It's untracked. We didn't track this one. Somehow it snuck up on us. Okay, well, let's track this object. Um, okay, so it's going to escape Kerbin. But maybe we should try to intercept it. Hmm. Uh, how long? A day? Well, all our moon missions will... Well, we need to get something up right away if we want to intercept it at all. And it looks like we're going to have to go into a polarish orbit. Uh, tough to figure out exactly how to match its orbit. But we, we should try. We'll try with a probe mission. We'll send uh, Kerbinauts over to it to do some science if we can get into orbit. But we should send a probe. Let's use the same probe that we used to uh, go into interplanetary space. It can't. We'll, we'll, we'll try that out. Let's, let's send that up right away. So here's our AD3 with the claw, and let's just get out to launch pad and uh, try and make an intercept with that with that asteroid. Though, that, God, that's going to be tricky. Um, we'll get into a polar orbit, then we'll see, maybe. Uh, it's bound to be a lot of maneuvering. I, I can't see, because we're not... Oh, I know what we can do. Uh, let's... Let's get onto the launch pad first. Okay, so here we're on the launch pad, but uh, let's take a look at the situation here. Uh, where is that uh, that one? Making a little smiley face gesture here. No, um, so what we need is for Kerbin to be in line with this orbit, you see. And, uh, not Kerbin, the KSC specifically. All right. It's really like there. So let's time up a little bit. I think what we should do is head south. If you take a look at it, it's going this way, and it's below Kerbin, like that. So it's going like this. And we're on this side of the planet, so we want to head south in order to intercept it. Okay, I think that's the right way to go. Let's, let's launch now. Oh, God. How long did I time warp? Okay, they're, they're on their way. All right, all right, that's fine. I was worried that they were too far, but, uh, but yeah, they're on their way, and uh, it's not a problem. Okay, lots of emergency stuff we've got going here. Uh, so we're heading south here this time. Okay, everything's a uh, go for launch, and let's do it. Okay, everything's looking good. Now I think I'll uh, meet up with you in orbit. Uh, we seem to be increasing our inclination with respect to the... okay that's getting worse. Let's see if we point to the target maybe we'll decrease? Yes we are. Whoa, but let's not deviate too far. We're not gonna be able to solve all our inclination issues uh, on launch like this but we'll solve quite a lot of it then that'll be very helpful. Okay, well, let's uh, hold off to Apolapsis now. 
We'll probably have to burn out of this periapsis in order to intercept. Let's try that out right now. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Oh wait, I saw something happening. Okay, so there's this sort of thing going on here. The trick is not to escape Kerbin Sphere of Influence before we can uh, get something. Okay, that looks promising. At least it's starting to promise something. I'm not getting too much closer than 60, so I've been there before. We'll take it for now. Try to do this first burn as accurately as possible so that we actually get the second burn. It's looking pretty good so far. Okay, I guess we'll have to take that. How far off? A little bit off. Okay, let's settle this down. We've got this out, uh, underway and then we'll see what to do about the moon missions. Okay, I don't think I got it too much better than this. And so we're aiming to get uh, within 80 kilometers. And that'll, that'll be good enough for a start. At least judging from our previous experience. It's going to be one heck of a burn to try and adjust speeds with it though. Okay, a bit indecisive, but it's about what I wanted. So maybe a little bit of an RCS push. Still not uh, entirely clear what the number actually is, but it's on its way to intercept this particular asteroid, this uh, YEW975 that uh, crept up on us. Uh, obviously this one wouldn't have hit Kerbin, but we don't want to miss any chances to do science. And we'll try and get this into Kerbin orbit so that we can send Kerbinauts over to it. I think that's enough excitement for this episode. Uh, we've got two missions underway. Well, I guess uh, what one thing we can do is send the one that's hanging out in orbit, this, this science junior standard, uh, over to Minmus. Let's send this one over to Minmus. So, uh, see you over there. And of course it's in the dark and we have no... Uh, why is the solar panels not out? I could have sworn I extended its solar panels. But anyway, uh, and we have no lights, so... Oh well. Let's, let's just get it underway. Oh wait, no this isn't the right one. Oh! You know what this is? Uh, so it made me revert to... Uh, I, I told you, I on the polar one, I had to revert. Um, I had to uh, revert to an earlier time because I was thralled up and it didn't have any power and it wouldn't let me return to the space center, but it left it in orbit. Sort of in orbit. This, this periapsis is low. It should come back down. In theory, if physics actually worked like that. Uh, when it was on rails, but this is actually the science junior one. I'll decide later what to do about this one. Let's go to the science junior I was actually trying for. Okay, here we are. Uh, still in the dark, still without lights, but at least uh, its solar panels are out like I, like I had actually done. And our other two are on their way to the moon, and we're going to send this one over to Minmus, which is an interesting burn. I think you'll agree. Uh, I'll, I'll match inclination first and then do the burn for it. Oh, we have a moon encounter as well. Well, I think we'll slip out of that. I hope we'll slip out of that. Yeah. Okay, that's sufficient. Let's do these two burns quickly. So, oh, the first is an inclination burn, so it'll be on this axis. So 
soon away we're very fortunate to get that asteroid that's not going to hit uh, Kerbin. We'll get some valuable information from it uh, in terms of how easy or hard it might be to get an asteroid into orbit around Kerbin and or just to change its tra trajectory ahead of the arrival of IHY-504 which is actually destined to uh, slam into Kerbin. At least we think it is. It's got a question mark on it. We don't see a periapsis on it so the assumption has to be that it's going to actually uh, crash into the planet. Okay, I think it's time to burn now. Okay, so we've got Minimus Periapsis about 230 kilometers, and that's in two days and 11 hours. So the order of operations will be uh, the two min, uh, moon missions first, then this intercept mission with this asteroid, and then finally the Minmus mission. And so, uh, we managed to get four missions up and running this time. Uh, three science missions and one claw mission. Two to the moon, one to Minmus, one to an asteroid. Uh, two with lights and two without lights. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please remember to press like below. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave those in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.